What's up guys, Mike here, and on the Knuckleheads podcast, they ask a question which I think is just awesome. Who's the first person that that you ran into that like, bust your ass? And after that question is asked, the guests on the show always give a very interesting answer. I would say probably like Rod Strickland. I would say him, Terrell Brandon, John Stockton. So as a fan of the Knuckleheads podcast, I thought it would be very interesting to do a video where we look at what seven NBA legends answer. And I'm talking about names like Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, Gilbert Arena, we are going to see what those guys answered and then we're going to dive deeper in what exactly happened now personally i love this video i thought it was awesome to make and i do want to give a huge shout out to the knuckleheads podcast they're not promoting this in any way but just go make sure to subscribe and listen to their podcast because again i think it's awesome as for now let's jump into the video number seven kevin durant known as one of the most versatile scorers in the game today kevin durant's silky smooth game has arguably made him one of the deadliest scorers in nba history as of course using his seven foot frame and deadly shooting ability when kd gets going he is borderline unstoppable however this pursuit of greatness did take some time as during the 2007 season during kd's first game on halloween when side note soldier boy's crank dat was on the top of the charts kd would face off against none other than carmelo anthony and this is what durant had to say Man, my first game was uh, against uh, Melo you know, and ai but i had to guard Melo. i was 18 19 he was probably what 23 and Melo was just physical he'd duck you in in the paint hit you with the shoulder, and then he'll take you out, jab, jab, pull over top of you, so you can't, one, be physical, but you don't, like, he just had you thinking too much on D. We had a back-to-back that night. I just, I got on the plane confused. Yes, this was clearly a case where Melo, one of the game's best scorers already at the time, had his way with Durant and gave him a truly welcome to the NBA moment. Now, to be fair, Durant did not do that bad himself, unlike some of the other players on this list, which is why he is at number seven. KD would finish with 18 points, five rebounds, and three steals and was not afraid to go at Melo early and at least kept the Sonics close. This was also probably a really cool moment for Durant as he did look up to Melo growing up and he surely learned a lot of lessons from his first experience going up against one of the game's best scorers. Number six, Gilbert Arenas. The day is February 5th, 2002. Gilbert Arenas is on a struggling Warriors team and Seattle is led by Gary Payton who is helping the Sonics to a future playoff run. Now, Although Gilbert would go on to become the face of the Wizards franchise by the end of the decade, this night would prove that at the time, he had a long way to go. As Arenas recalled, Gary Payton, it was seven minutes of a ass whooping he was giving me. It was just one of those things where he had 17 all on me in that first five minutes. Like, we got the ball, and he did that little smirk. Turn it threw me head. off already. Oh, I, like, I just picked the ball up. Like, I'm not even near to do that. I just picked it up and threw it. Like, I Yes. Gilbert would go into complete shock from being schooled by one of the toughest guards to ever play the game. This was a major rookie getting sunned moment as Payton would finish with 20 points and nine assists while Arenas, well, he would score just four points. Because of this, of course, it should come as no surprise that Gilbert has major respect for Gary Payton, but because he is a competitor, it is also no surprise that Gilbert would recall this as he improved, and he would later say Payton wasn't as good as he originally believed and would even go as far as to call Payton, quote, little and funny. Ultimately, though, the stats do not lie, as Payton would finish with a 14-2 career record against Arenas, so I would not call that little and fun. Number five, Kobe Bryant. We all know how Kobe grew up watching Michael Jordan and emulated his game to a certain degree, but you might not expect that the NBA player who first put Kobe to work was actually Nick Van Exel. Yes, when Kobe was drafted by the Lakers, his confidence was sky high, and he was focused on being the best one-on-one player of all time. The thing is though, Nick Van Exel had other ideas in mind when it came to being a mentor to the young Kobe. As Kobe recalled, Nick Van Exel in practice. Nick the quick was getting me in practice. You know, he just kept saying, you reach, I teach, you reach, I teach. And he was hitting me with that little bop stuff and uh, drove me crazy. And my first time getting out there and playing, Nick went at me pretty hard. Now, Nick Van Exel did know Kobe was going to be a superstar regardless, stating, quote, you know, he was very, very good at uh, on the defensive end. 
offensively, he was he, he wasn't going to be stopped. However, even though Kobe was destined for greatness, we still have to remember he was just 17 at the time. So regardless of the talent he had, 17-year-old Kobe was still going up against grown men, and this came as a complete shock to him. This story does have a happy ending, though, as 20 years later in Kobe Bryant's 60-point final game, Nick Van Exel stated he shed a tear that night, which is, you know, kind of sweet. Number four, Dwayne Wade. The Miami Heat believed that Dwayne Wade was going to become the king of South Beach early on. But if any player made him strive for even greater heights, it was Baron Davis. As Wade remembers, BD used to tear me up, bro. He was so nice. He had a crazy the handle. Bob. The Diddy Bob. The Diddy Bob. He had a tray ball, strong, athletic, and he was a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know another dog when you sense one. When you see nice. one, I rolled up to him and saw your dog. And it is easy to say why he said this. In the first two games Dwayne Wade played against Baron Davis, Davis had 28 points, 10 assists, and 5 rebounds, while Wade had just six points, four assists, and four rebounds. And then on March 10th, Baron Davis had 33 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists, while Wade had just 11 points, four assists, and two rebounds. It wouldn't take long for Wade to learn from the ultra-athletic Baron Davis, though, as Miami would shockingly get a four seed in the playoffs that year and face off against, you guessed it, Baron Davis and the Charlotte Hornets. The series was a back-and-forth affair, highlighted by a game one where Wade would hit a legendary buzzer-beating floater in his first ever playoff game. However, Dwayne was held to just 13 points combined in games three and four, and this series would go back and forth. It was, though, Dwayne Wade and the Miami Heat who would go on to win the series in seven games, meaning Wade's footprint was officially on the NBA map. So even though Baron Davis did completely dominate Dwayne Wade in their first two meetings, it was Dwayne Wade who would get the last laugh in his first ever season and of course would go on to win multiple NBA championships. Number three, Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson would go on to captivate the hearts of millions of NBA fans around the world and with his tough mentality, it seems surprising that he would let anyone bust his butt. Except when you're a young player, you have to expect that this is going to happen from time to time. And so on February 26, 1997, Kevin Johnson absolutely manhandled AI. KJ was completely unstoppable putting up 36 points and 8 assists to go directly against 8 points from Iverson on just 3 of 15 shooting with 4 turnovers. AI remembers this game well, saying, Like, I ain't never had nobody bust my ass before. <laughs> Not for real. Yeah. I, I, in my life, we played the Phoenix Sun and KJ. It, it was not all athletic ability or nothing like that. It was just, he was just so much smarter than me. He just knew how to play the game. You know what I mean? I was just a puppy. And I was actually crying in my life. I never got destroyed like that. Yes, indeed. On this night, KJ destroyed Iverson. And AI was even crying after the game so badly because nobody had ever dominated him in that way before. With that said, 76ers assistant coach Maurice Cheeks would calmly go over to AI and told him that soon enough, it would be him that would be smoking opponents just like KJ did that night. And after this happened, Allen Iverson would go on to become one of the greatest rookies of all time. On top of this, he would actually get his revenge on Kevin Johnson as Allen Iverson crossed over Kevin Johnson so badly that his ankles nearly broke in half. And it was around this time that KJ knew to retire. Number two, Steve Nash. Steve Nash would go on to become one of the most memorable point guards in NBA history. And after winning back-to-back -back MVPs is certain to be a first ballot Hall of Fame. At the start of his career, however, nobody could have predicted the success Nash would eventually have. He averaged just 3.3 points per game his rookie season, and on December 30th, 1996, Steve would have his most painful moment as a rookie. The Suns were already struggling with a 10 and 18 record, and they were facing off against the Mitch Richmond led Sacramento Kings. Nash remembers what happened next, saying, We played Sacramento. Mitch Richmond was heating up, and I remember Danny was like, like You get in there and just make it difficult on him. They're going to post you up, we'll double, but on the perimeter, get in him. I think he might be, you could throw him off his rhythm. That was how I got minutes. And he cooked me. I just remember feeling so helpless. He was just brushing me off. Oh my God, this is a 
embarrassing. Richmond would eventually go off for 40 points, six rebounds, and five assists. As for Nash, well, his two-point performance certainly did not open up anyone's eyes at the time, but surprisingly, the Suns would win by 12 as only one other player besides Richmond on the Kings would finish with more than seven points. Now, looking back at this, especially because Steve Nash developed later in his career, this was certainly not exactly an embarrassing moment as Mitch Richmond did make six straight All-Star games from 1992 to 1998, and he averaged at least 21.9 points per game in his first eight seasons in the NBA. Richmond would also go on to be inducted in the Basketball Hall of Fame, and as we all know, again, Steve Nash would become a two-time MVP, so this was just a minor setback in an otherwise legendary career, but man, did Steve Nash get dominated that night. And number one, Gary Payton. Gary Payton is known as one of the biggest trash talkers in NBA history and is also a point guard who revolutionized the game in terms of his incredible defense and legendary work ethic. However, despite this, of course, the man had no idea what he was in store for when he encountered Michael Jordan for the first time. Because, crazily enough, Gary Payton actually thought that as a rookie, he would be able to outclass Jordan, but he was proven wrong very, very fast. Because the thing is, Gary Payton's Sonics did play the Bulls in the preseason, and Payton actually did pretty well. As we all know, though, the preseason does not count at all, especially in the eyes of Michael Jordan. So, after Payton and talk some trash after his good preseason game. In Gary Payton's first actual game against Michael Jordan, Payton would remember this moment saying, I know that moment. MJ. Yeah, I was talking to him in uh, preseason, so I'm killing him. Then all of a sudden, we got a play him in the first game of the regular season. But he was like, the young, young fella, my, he mine all night. And he's like, this ain't preseason. The rest is history, as Jordan would finish with 33 points and seven steals while guarding Gary Payton. As Payton, he put up just two points and had four turnovers in 21 minutes before being benched. And as if this was not enough, after being benched, Jordan would walk over to Payton while the game was still going on and told him, quote, this is the real sh right here. Welcome to the NBA, little fella. Of course, Gary Payton would go on to have a Hall of Fame basketball career, but he would also lose to Michael Jordan in the 1996 NBA Finals, and this story in general is just another reason why Michael Jordan was not you. And there we have it guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. Again, go check out the Knuckleheads podcast. And as always, have an awesome day guys and cue that music. By the way, if you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are going to love watching. All you have to do is just click on either one of them on the screen right here. And other than that guys, again, have a great day and peace.